the final words of Krishna and Arjuna in the Srimad Bhagavad Gita. The situation is still the same for Arjuna. The same battle, opponents, dangers and everything. However, what has changed is his state of mind, which had weakened due to attachments and other brain-numbing factors. Said Krishna in Shloka 605 in the Srimad Bhagavad Gita. The mind is the greatest friend for the one who has conquered it. But for the one who has not done so, the mind is the greatest enemy. Nowhere in the Srimad Bhagavad Gita are there stories of Krishna waving his hand and magically defeating the enemies of Arjuna and helping him win the war. Krishna teaches the use of intelligence guided by wisdom and to act with no attachments to the result, but to do whatever he wishes to do, bearing in mind the welfare of the world. The entire Srimad Bhagavad Gita is a systematic study leading to complete mastery over one's own mind and to bringing out their true inner divine nature and powers. The knowledge you gain from it teaches you that no one, no God, no planet or no external force is doing anything unto you, but it is your own choices that cause both good and bad in your life. Krishna does not ask Arjuna to pray and ask for whatever he wants, which is an aspect that forms a major part of mass enslavement methods used in organized religions. Arjuna had Krishna himself as his own driver all through the war, but did he even once ask Krishna to perform magic and end the war? No. And what would you do if you had Krishna as your own personal driver? The only thing Arjuna asked Krishna for was in Shloka 207 in video 15 of 100, which was to be accepted as Krishna's pupil and not any special divine favor from him. There is no such thing as pray and ask and it shall be given, but it is work righteously and fearlessly and get what you want. Teaching children to pray to God for what they want paralyzes nearly 50% of their mental capacity to think, invent, create and evolve and also induces unnecessary fear of the unknown into their tender and innocent minds. Instead, teaching them Vedanta and about the highest natural principle of cause and effect would help them grow up into responsible souls and that would be the greatest thing parents could do for their young ones. The entire Shruna Bhagavad Gita is a metaphor. Arjuna represents you and Krishna represents your higher self, which is the all-pervading consciousness, Brahman or Krishna himself. Krishna has said it a number of times. Go through Shloka 1020 in video 12 of 100 again. The war of Kurukshetra between the good guys and the bad guys is an externalization of your own perennial inner conflicts that make it challenging for you to arrive at decisions that will end up being good for you. By actually considering Krishna a separate being, you will only be disregarding his all-pervadingness. Krishna, Brahman, Paramartha Tattvam or the Supreme Divine Principle is all-pervading. Is there any difference between the space in an empty pot known as Ghatakasha and in the sky which is also empty space? Will the universe in any way be affected if the pot containing the empty space were to break? I am sure your answer to both the questions was in the negative, wasn't it? Everything, both physical and subtle, exists in space. All stellar systems with their trillions of heavenly bodies exist in space, which is pure nothingness. All physical beings and objects are like pots containing the same space which is all-pervading. 
A major problem of people stems from the mental delusion that they are separate from the rest because they are in separate physical bodies. This leads to one of the prime causes of almost all kinds of human suffering, the feeling of entitlement that blocks people from coming to terms with reality. The vast majority of people feel they deserve better without giving any thought as to why at all they deserve anything better than what others receive. Using the Vedantic simile of being the all-pervading divine principle existing temporarily in a pot space can straight away destroy all kinds of mental pain and, what is more, also physical pain. I say this from sheer personal experience. Learn to come to terms, at least temporarily, with any predicament that you might be facing. As a result of doing so, you'll be able to clear the air of emotions that cloud your intelligence and your subconscious mind and intellect will remain undisturbed and fully functioning, enabling you to reach your goals with greater ease. In Shloka 1873, Arjuna says that he has regained his memory. What does that mean? It means that by the grace of the Supreme Teacher Jagadguru Bhagavan Sri Krishna, Arjuna has cleared his mind of illusions and delusions caused by his ignorance and attachments only to bring out his true divine intellect. I am eternally grateful to Maharshi Krishna Dvaipaya Naveda Vyasa for this life-changing supreme scripture which is the perfect guide to leading a happy, prosperous and fulfilling life. This course has two more videos plus one bonus video to go. 99, 100 and 101. Shlokas 1872 and 1873. 1872. Kachide the Chirutam Partha, Vaye Gagre in a Chetasa. Kachide Gnana Samoha, Pranashta de Dananjaya. 1873. Arjuna Uvacha. Nashto Moha Smurti Lapta, Tot Prasadan Mayachuta. Titos Megata Sandeha Karishi Vachanam Dava. Have you heard this with undivided attention, O Arjuna? Has your delusion due to ignorance been dispelled, O Dananjaya? Arjuna said, O Krishna, the perfect one, my delusion has been destroyed and I have regained my memory by your grace. I am steady and free from doubts. I will act according to your word. Kachide the Chrutam Partha Dvayai Kagrena Chetasa Kachide Jnana Samoha Pranashtaste Dananjaya Kachid E the Chrutam Kachide the Chrutam Partha Kachide the Chrutam Partha Vayai Kagrena Vayai Kagrena Chetasa Kachida Gnana Samoha Kachida Gnana Samoha Pranash Taste Pranash Taste Dananjaya Pranashtaste dhananjaya Kachide the Chrutam Bartha Dvayai Kagrena Chetasa Kachida Jnana Samoha Pranashtaste dhananjaya Arjuna Uvacha Nashto Moha Smritir Labdha Nashto Moha Smritir Labdha Tvat prasadan maya chuta. Tvat prasadan maya chuta. Tvat prasadan maya chuta. Tvat prasadan maya chuta. 
स्थितोस्मि गत संदेह स्थितोस्मि गत संदेह करिष्ये वचनम तप करिष्ये वचनम तव अर्जुन उवाच नष्टो मोह स्मृतिर्लब्धान मयाच्युत स्थितोस्मि गत संदेह करिष्ये वचनम तव कच्चिदे दुत पार्थद्वयग्रेण चेतस कच्चिद ज्ञान सम्मोह प्रनष्टस्ते धनंजय अर्जुन उवाच नष्टो मोह स्मृतिर्लब्धाच्युत स्थितोस्मि गत संदेह करिष्ये वचनम तव हे अर्जुन क्या तुमने इस शास्त्र को एकाग्र चित्त होकर सुना और हे धनंजय क्या अब अज्ञान के कारण तुम्हारा भ्रम तथा मोह दूर हो गया है अर्जुन ने कहा हे कृष्ण हे अर्जुन अब मेरा भ्रम नष्ट हो गया है और आपकी कृपा से मैंने अपनी स्मृति को पुनः प्राप्त कर लिया है मैं दृढ़ हूं और संदेह से मुक्त हूं मैं आपके आदेश अनुसार कर्म करने के लिए उद्यत हूं अर्जुन इन दास्त्र गवन तोड़न कहता है अज्ञान ताल उन्जय अर्जुन कृष्णा अच्छुद मयकम अड़ीत नान उवन संदेहवन उमद बोधन तयारे अर्जुन नीक बोध श्रद्धा विनावा नी अज्ञान भ्रांति पोईंदय अर्जुन इन अच्छुत ना भ्रांति नशिचिपोई दयावल ने ज्ञापक शक्ति पुनरुद्धरुना ने खचिद मरी सदेह उधन प्रकार नड़चुरा ने सिद्ध उन्ना अर्जुन नानु नीन नीनो गमनमेट किया नि अज्ञान भ्रमे हमिया धनंजय अर्जुन अच्छुत नमे नाशवायत निम कृपया नानु नमरण चेत नानु खचित ये सदेहवे निम बोधने प्रकार नड़यू नानु सिद्ध हे अर्जुन तू एकाग्र चित्ता ने हे शास्त्र ऐकले हैस का आता हे धनंजया तुझा अज्ञा भ्रम नहीं सा अर्जुन मनाला हे अच्छुता आता मजा भ्रम नष्ट है तुम्हार कृपा ने मला माझी स्मरण शक्ति परत मिला मी खंबीर शंका मुक्त है मी तुम्हार आदेश अनुसार वगनेस तैयार है अर्जुन ज्ञान पढ़िपच्चत नी श्रद्धयोड़ कटो अज्ञान भ्रम नींजय अर्जुन पर अच्छुत ए भ्रम नशिचु अंगो कृपया या ओर्म वीडू या स्थिरतावन संशय मुक्त अंगयोड़ उपदेशमुस प्रवर्ती या तैयार